What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Fan Take. This is episode 11. This is uh, the home edition. Uh, it's my first time recording at home, so if the presentation is a little weird, we're we going to get it right. We're going to get it right. Um, yeah, so we're recording this uh, Thursday night, the uh, the night of um, the Pacers versus the Bucks and uh, the Sixers versus the Knicks, so we're recording right after the, the Knicks. Um, Sixer uh, game six, so uh, that's what we're gonna start off with. But um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and get into uh, the, the games from tonight. First, we got the Bucks versus the Pacers. It was game six. Um, the Pacers took it home um, four two over the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, Pacers game six is one twenty to the Bucks ninety eight. Um, what did you think about this game? And then what do you think about um, this series as a whole? Uh, yeah, I didn't know what happened to this game because it, it was just going to be hard seeing the Bulls lose to you know, a team that they were very capable of beating. Um, Giannis was out the whole series. That really hurt the series. But I just feel like being Damian Lillard, I know he was out two games, but they won one of those games. So being Damian Lillard, you should have been able to win that series without Giannis against the Pacers, so a young team, you know, fairly young team. Um, you should be you should have outplayed Halliburton, man. I, I just feel I just how I feel. I mean, you're Damian Lillard, and you went there, so you no know, Giannis can you know when Giannis not doing his thing, he can have somebody to fall back on when he needed you right then and there to fall back on. You didn't execute, so I don't blame the whole thing on Dame, but you know. Uh, the Bucks just ain't had no success in a couple of years. Yeah, uh, I agree. Um, I don't. I didn't think with with Giannis being out, I didn't think the Pacers was going. I mean, I didn't think the Bucks was going to be able to beat the Pacers in the series. Obviously, when we look at the season series, I don't know the exact number, but the Pacers have been owning the Bucks in the regular season all season, so <clears throat> it wasn't necessarily a surprise. But I mean, the books, they were in it for pretty much the whole series. Um, I remember watching the game. I think it had to have been, um, was the game three? I can't remember. But um, Dame uh, wasn't around. And I mean, even Bobby Portis, he got um, um, kicked out in the first uh, couple minutes. So it was basically just um, Brooke Lopez. Um, uh, was oh Middleton and um Pat Connaughton for the whole game and they played a very competitive game with the Pacers and um you you can tell that the, the Bucks do have the talent to, to keep up with them in a the game but I just didn't think you know overall especially without Giannis they was gonna be able to beat the Pacers um in the whole series and um yeah um some some notes um I don't have it here. I want to say it's the uh, the Pacers' first time winning a series in uh, some like ten years. It was um, last time they won a series. Obviously, Paul George was 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 still in town, so um, this is definitely a a a nice thing to celebrate uh, for Pacers fans winning their first um, playoff series in, in quite a long time. Next thing we're going to get into, um, we got to talk Knicks. Versus 76ers, the Knicks and the 76ers have had a very uh, competitive series in the first round. Um, the night, Thursday, the Knicks took the series home 4-2 um, against the 76ers in the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia. Um, the score was... I don't have a score. Do you remember the score? <laughs> you remember the score? It was close. Um, 116, 113, I believe. Yeah, it was something like that. But, yeah, um, what was your takeaways from um, the game and, and this series as a whole? Uh, um, I got I had Knicks in the finals, you know, so it's just great seeing them beating the 76 and one team that was, you know, heavily thought to be in the finals, you know, taking on those teams out early. You know, you still got Boston. But um, the New York, I mean, it was just – them Nova, them Nova boys, man. I mean, ball movement, rebounding as a whole, assists, moving the ball. The Knicks look beautiful, man. 
the Knicks are one of the most well-rounded teams, and they don't have the best players. It's just their coach. They're like they're coached so well, and they move the ball so well, and they all defend. They all know how to switch, rotate, rebound. That team is special, man. And uh, I can see them playing the great series with Boston. Yeah, and uh, one, uh, correction on the score, uh, I got it. It's the Knicks 118, uh, 76-115. But yeah, um, I think this is probably the most entertaining series out of all the, the first round series. Every single game uh closed back and forth. You had your OT game in there. Um it would have been very interesting to see what it would have been like if Embiid would have been um not hundred percent, but at least eighty. I'd say you probably got fifty fifty five, sixty percent of Embiid this whole series. Um Obviously, with the knee, he's been, you know, in and off the court uh, with the knee. It's like every time you turn around, they uh, tell him to go to the back to, to check on something. Um, he had, uh, I think they call it Bell Palsy, which was the thing that was going on with his eye, where, you know, half his face was was uh, paralyzed or however they explained it to where, you know, at some points, his one eye was like, I think it was the left side, one eye was like down here, the other eye was up there. So like he couldn't see, and um, yeah, that was, that was pretty that was pretty nasty. But yeah, um, for every game to be so close and and be um, to be only fifty six percent of himself, you, it's really interesting to see what it would have been like if um, and B would have been uh, closer in health. Um, Yeah, and the yeah the Knicks will be playing the Pacers Knicks um yeah. in the semifinals. Yeah, I mean that, that, that's easy. Yeah, that's that's easy for easy for who? That, that that's easy for the Knicks. Who you got? Bro, the, you, you, the Pacers. You, you can't the, keep the playing Pacers the Pacers like that, bro. I'm not playing the Pacers like that. I'm giving them one, maybe two games. Well, I'm not playing the Pacers like that. I mean, yeah, the Pacers, the Pacers are, are full of health. I mean, Halliburton's looking real good. Uh, Miles Turner's been playing real well. Is uh, real good? Role Halliburton players been showing been up. Kind of hmm? Halliburton been kind of shaking. Yeah, but he's he's yeah, been he playing. Been yeah, but he hasn't been playing out of his body. That's all I'm saying. He hasn't been playing, you know, how in the regular season where you saw him dropping like 30, 40 and stuff like that. He hasn't been playing out of his body, but he's been, he's been playing – but he's been playing solid, you know, in in as far as like being able to contribute to the team um as a whole. Nah, your best player can't do just as much as Josh Hart. <laughs> like, hey, Josh Hart been hooping. Josh Hart had a couple twenty points. Exactly, exactly. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Exactly. But, um, yeah, it'd be it'd be very interesting to see um how this series play out because both of the teams are, are very young and they're both very fast paced. The seven sisters were, you know, more of a slow paced team. So, well, both teams being, you know, young and fast paced, it'd be very interesting to see uh, how this series goes. Yeah, so staying in the East, um, I'm going to look at the Celtics versus the Heat. Um, the Celtics have uh, finished their gentleman sweep of the Heat. Uh, Four one. What do you think about uh, the series with the Celtics and the Heat? Um, horrible series, man. It was, it was okay. I mean, well, I know Jimmy Butler. You really didn't think that he could do anything. Tyler Hero had a game. Um, Bam helped him out that game. You know, Duncan Robinson really wasn't doing too much of anything. He pulled in the Clay Thompson. Um, <laughs> I mean, you just you, you you really never just thought the Heat. Like you never thought they could really be like get two games against Boston. Like the one game shocked me. I thought it was gonna be a clean sweep. And then I see right after you know they lose the series, Jimmy asked for two years with like what it was 55 million, 60 million, something like that. Something around I didn't really look at it too much. Cause I was just like, it doesn't make sense, man. You just missed a you just missed an important series and now you're asking for money and they really could have used you. I believe we Jimmy Bullet would have went to six. I still had Boston win. I mean, Miami just wasn't uh Eastern Conference Finals team this year. Eastern Conference semi team this year. Yeah, it wasn't much to talk about with the series, but um 
Yeah, it was much to talk about. I mean, one game that the Heat did take, they had a, a franchise record. I want to say it was like 26 threes in one game. So they had to shoot the lights out in order to beat the the, the Celtics. The game that they did uh, was able to take home. Um, yeah, man, it's, <clears throat> it's going to be interesting seeing uh, in the second round. They're going to be uh, facing the, the Cavs or the Magic. Um, the Cavs are currently leading the Magic. 3-2 in their series. Uh, we're going to see the, the results of that tomorrow. Uh, if if you're watching this, you probably have already seen uh, this game. But, um, yeah, what do you um, – I, I haven't been tuned into uh, the Cavs and the Magic, but do you have anything you want to say about the Cavs and the Magic? I watched um, – I watched – I briefly scammed two games of the Cavs and the Magic. Let me know. Nothing but the Wagner brothers, and I mean it, it's boring, bro. It's boring, bro. It's it, it's hard to watch. <laughs> Donovan Mitchell just jumping, flying everywhere. You know, our grand John Moran. I'm not saying he's horrible, but I'm saying like he just flying everywhere. Um, nah, man, it's a horrible series. I got nothing to say about it. Um, I haven't had a chance to watch it, like I said in the last episode, because it's been on NBA TV. This uh, it's been on NBA TV or or uh, on on Bali and. I don't, I don't have none of those, but um, I do see that tomorrow, um, uh, Friday is going to be on ESPN, so that'll be my first time, you know, tuning into the series. I'm gonna check it out, and um, yeah, who, who, who you think gonna take it home? The Cavs are leading three two right now. Who you think gonna, gonna go up against the Celtics next round? The Cavs, and then they're gonna lose five. <laughs> All right, let's go um, to the West. Uh, starting from the top, you got the Thunder and the Pelicans. The Thunder completed their sweep of the Pelicans um, 4-0. Uh, kind of expected this with um, Zion being out, but, but what are your overall takeaways from the Thunder Pelican series? Um, I love it, man. I love it, man. Like, Thunder, you know, we've been down so long. Now we move second round. Everybody still down us. Still saying we're the worst team in the second round. They said we were the worst number one seed of all time. Then we got a sweep. Even though Zion wasn't there, I believe Zion would only got them one or two games, probably two games. You no, know, he's a great player. But the Thunder, they were just outmatching the Pelicans every game. I mean, Brandon Ingram shot horrible. With Zion, he still would have shot horrible. Like, so you know, I don't I don't really think it would have made too much of a difference, probably just a game or two. Um, mediocre series. I mean, it wasn't no competition. Y'all best player couldn't do anything. He, just, he stepped up towards the end of the series, but it, it still wasn't enough to get a game. The Thunder defensive presence is probably one of those of the best in the playoffs, and some people need to realize that this young team is coming. Yeah, for sure. Um, wasn't really a fun series. I stopped watching after the second game. Actually, <laughs> um, the first game was pretty was pretty competitive. I think because you know usually um, the game ones both of the teams are just trying to see you know what what each other team is working with. <laughs> I wish the Pelicans would have explored um, putting we're well, not putting Valentinus on 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 Chet, but as far as offensively, because in the first game I saw. Um, Valchunas made a lot of good plays on Chet just because you know he's more of a, 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 a Chet don't have that many bricks in his back pocket, and, and Valchunas does. And uh, I, I saw um, them expose that a little bit in the first game, but I just didn't see that for the rest of the of the, um, of the series. And um, a couple notes about the Thunder the Thunder won the first playoff series since 2016. Obviously, KD was still there. Um, the Thunder is also the youngest team in NBA history to win a playoff series. Their average age is 22. Um, so this is basically like a, a senior college team in the NBA that's, that's winning a um, playoff series. Next, we're going to talk about the series between the Los Angeles Clippers and the Dallas Mavericks. Um, so set the set the background up. The uh, Dallas is now leading um, 3-2 versus the Clippers. Um, obviously, we know Luca's history with the Clippers. All four of Luca's 
playoff uh, triple doubles are against the Clippers. Uh, Luka averages 32.5 points per game versus the Clippers, which is um, the most all time, um, which includes the, the uh, postseason and regular season. Um, um, the Clippers have been up and down um, this whole series. Um, interesting stat. Westbrook is uh, 4 of 32 from the field in games 2 through 5. And in game 5, uh, Paul George dropped 15, Harden dropped 7, and uh, Russ dropped 6. So uh, what are your current takeaways about um, this series with the Mavs and the Clippers? Man, I did not know that Westbrook stat. What is he doing? Over there, too, I mean, it's good to see who's losing the series for him. And um, Luka just being Luka, man. He's unstoppable. Kyrie is come, going back to that Cleveland, you know, Boston Kyrie, you know, crossing everybody up, making weird, crazy layups. Kyrie being Kyrie, man, it's great to see because, you know, people thought Kyrie fell off, and it's, it's great to see him come back and, you know, do the things he used to do. Um, the rest of the Mavs, I didn't think I don't I didn't I never I had the Mavs in the series just because solely Luka Doncic, but I didn't think the rest of the Mavs was as great as they are. You know, Tim Hardaway Jr. You know he coming out hitting his little threes and everything. I mean, it's great to see you got Lively. You know, you got PJ Washington. They got a you no know, decent team down there in Dallas, and the Clippers. They just they need Kawhi. Well, they don't. I, I don't know. The because you say they need Kawhi, but they win more. Without Kawhi, then when they got Kawhi, but they seem more of a complete team with Kawhi. Well, I don't know. And, um, they, I think it was Game Four. It was it was Harden versus Kyrie at the end. They were scoring back to back. Harden went back to Houston Harden, and they won them that game. I'm telling you, Houston Harden is he dangerous. He can he can he can win a series. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, I I think the I think the, I don't know. But um, obviously, the uh, Luca and the Mavericks have never been able to beat the Clippers in the playoffs thus far. Even though he's had uh, tremendous success uh, individually against the Clippers, but I think it's going to be the year that the Clippers um, finally get the Mavs. I just think the Clippers uh, is having a hard time getting together, being consistent on offense. Obviously, you have uh, well, currently you only have three stars playing Kawhi's out. But I just think it's as I said in the last episode, it's just hard to organize. Um, you know, so much talent, especially, you know, social order because um, James Hart just came uh, this season. Uh, no training camp, no, you know, off season, nothing like that. So, um, yeah, and then, you know, you got three guys who've had shaky history already, you know what I'm saying, in, in the playoffs. Uh, I remember some years back um, on the Thunder, Westbrook had a game where he dropped like 40 and Paul George had five. Uh, James Harden, he's had some struggles in the playoffs. Uh, I remember the game. Um, I think that was the game that, that Chris Paul went down. It was either game, I want to say it was game six or game seven versus the Warriors in the West Conference Finals, and James Harden had like 14. So, you know, it's you got three guys who've had some shaky history in the playoffs. And you put them together, you try to say, you know, we want to work this thing out offensively, and that's uh, going to be a struggle. So uh, for me, I think I'll take um, uh, the Luca, Luca and, and the Clippers. Uh, not Luca and the Clippers, Luca and the Mavericks this time to uh, go over the Clippers. And if they were to win, um, yeah, if the if the um, Luca and the Mavericks were to win, they'll be taking on the Thunder in the um, semifinals. Who, who do you think will uh, come on out on top if the Mavericks were to play the Thunder in the semis? The game, the, this series automatically goes to six or seven, and I got the Thunder taking it in six. Totally because I I, I just think we just we we outman the the Mavericks. And the Clippers without Kawhi, we outman them too. So I would, you just outman it. Um, for me, I just got the Mavericks. <laughs> Going off of just you know talent, you got talent that can match the talent that the um the Thunder has. You have Kyrie, you got Luca, so you got the star power. Um, 
you got Biggs, you got Gafford, you got um, uh, can't remember the guy name, but uh, PJ Washington, he's been playing real well. He he's uh, uh playing the four. You got some good bench production out of um uh, Kleber and uh the other guys they got. So just off experience, uh, to go along with the talent, I just feel like if if the Mavericks were to face the Thunder, yeah. Where where is the experience in the Mavericks? Right, right. You do realize the Mavericks. You do realize. You realize the. You realize the Mavericks went to West Conference Finals two years ago, right? With the same group. It wasn't the same this, group, bro. This is basically Some the same roster. Only only, only guys you don't have is Jalen Brunson and and uh, Porzingis. But outside of that, it's basically it's the same different. roster. You still got the white power. Well, you still. You still got the white power. You still got uh uh white power. Uh, Cleaver. Come on, bro. Cleaver. Come playoff, on. playoff experience matter, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you, playoff experience matters. It, it matters, matter. but people said that the first round, people said that. Oh, like, oh, okay, bro. We're going to see. I mean, the Pelicans are an exception because they didn't have the, enough talent to match the, uh, the, uh, the Thunder. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Speaking of experience, uh, the next series we have to talk about is the Timberwolves. Versus the Suns, um, the Timberwolves completed their sweep of the Phoenix Suns. Uh, that features Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, and Devin Booker. Um, the T Wolves is their first playoff series win since um, 2004, which is <laughs> crazy to uh, think about. It's been exactly 20 years since um, T Wolves have, have won a um, playoff series. So. Um, what are just some of your overall thoughts about uh, this series and, and how it played out? Man, it's had to see, man. KD, Devin Book, and Bradley Beal all together couldn't make it past the first round against some youngsters. And what it really was, KD, he was doing his thing. KD, he played solid series. Devin Booker only played two games. Bradley Beal played a half of a game every game. He had 12, 14, 12, 12, like, what did, like, score 20 points, bro. And the team was just structured horribly. The team wasn't structured to beat the Tim Wolves. The Tim Wolves had two centers. The Suns had none. There's no way they would. They got, they got Nurkis, bro. <laughs> Nurkis was getting killed defensively. He was balling on offense, but think about it. Your bench, like your bench defensive big man is, is Nurkic. Mm-hmm. It can't be your best defensive big man on a team where you got all scores. You gotta have a, a, a decent defensive big man around the scores. You have another score in the paint. You don't have like where is your defense? And then you have no point guard. You had no defense, no, no solid defensive center. No point guard. That was a horrible structured team, and nobody. Well, some people did see through. I don't know. Like, some people told me. You know, I just was delusional to think that nobody can guard those people. But everybody can guard you. You can't dribble the ball. You ain't got no playmaking. Like no, no rotation, no screen and roll. Like nothing was going on. KD got all his points taking people out to dribble, but only KD can do that. Like y'all not KD. Y'all, y'all not the score of KDR. Y'all need a playmaker on that team. Why did you give up Chris Paul, man? Just sad to see. Yeah, um, yeah, the team just uh structure bad, as you said. Um they needed, you know, somebody a point guard that could that could facilitate and, and you know hand all those guys the ball. You try to make um like I said in the last episode, you're trying to make Devin Booker be a, a, a pseudo um um point, but that's just not his game. And you look at you know the offensive games of Bradley Beal, Kevin Durant, and Devin Booker. They're pretty much all the same. Um, Devin Booker's a little bit less than KD, and Bradley Beal's a little bit less than Devin Booker. So um, yeah, you just got three guys that's all trying to do the same thing with you know one basketball. And um, Bradley Beal had some tough games. I'm guessing you know he just couldn't get into rhythm. Obviously, he doesn't have you know the ball for 90 percent of the game like he does in, in Washington where he could choke up, you know, 30 shots and, and make, you know, 30 points. Um, 
and man. You get, I mean, yeah, the Suns play bad, but you gotta, you know, tip your hat to um the Timberwolves. I mean, they played, you know, uh super well. Uh, everybody thought it was crazy having, you know, running two uh true bigs in you know twenty twenty four. But you know, they made it work. You got um um Cat being offensive big and you got Rudy Gobert being a defensive big. And man, he had some great games. He dropped 40, dropped 30. Um, dunked on KD. Um, he did, he just, didn't dunk on KD, bro. <laughs> but you, you, you got to see the other angle, bro. He, he got out the way, bro. Come on, bro. He, he, he cleanly got out the way, bro. Come on. Man, he dunked on KD and he just, you know, he uh, just going to all three levels. Mike Conley, the veteran point guard. Um, able to dish the ball out to everybody, uh, be a good veteran presence, uh, tons of playoff experience. They just had a, a solid um, uh, bench. Got Nas Reed, um, just it was uh, the kid Alexander Walker. It was just a talented team, a uh, nice mix of a playoff experience, nice mix of talent, and they just beat a team that wasn't structured well and wasn't uh, prepared for um, their onslaught. It'd be interesting to see. Um, how the off season and in the next season is gonna go? Uh, I, I saw Matt Ish, Matt Ishbia, the new owner of the Suns, say uh, that he wants to run it back. I saw James Jones, uh, the GM, say he he feels like uh, they can can make KD reach his full potential or whatever that means. Um, so um, the 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 fall guy might be Frank Vogel. Um, since it's like. Uh, people aren't really talking uh, too great about him. Uh, what type? What type of coach do you think uh, the the Suns could 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 take to, to take them over the top if they was to get rid of Frank Vogel? JJ Reddick. <laughs> what? He, he, I, I mean, I, I mean JJ Reddick. Yeah, JJ Reddick cool, uh, but he coaches his. Um, is it his sons or, or his daughters' teams? I don't. I don't think he he tried to coach. Uh, uh, I mean, NBA ball. And then you know he got the thing with ESPN. Talk. He got his own podcast. Then he got the podcast with Braun. I don't think he got the time to be trying to mess with no, no NBA head coach. coach. Hmm. They said a podcast is for him to come and coach LeBron. <laughs> I'm so serious. I've been hearing though, know, even ESPN's been posting it. Like, it's rumors. Like, I'm telling you, like, JJ Reddick might be jumping into the game. I mean, he might be, but I, don't, I just feel like right now, I just, don't, I just don't feel like that's what he wants to do. Not right now. But it'd be interesting to see. I don't, I don't know. Um, another thing to look at the Suns have to pre- pay. Um, Bradley Beal, fifty million dollars, fifty-four million dollars, and fifty-seven million dollars over the next three years. Obviously, they have one hundred fifty million dollars all together wrapped up in just KD, uh, Bradley Beal, and Devin Booker next year. So, um, what do you think that's going to mean for you know building their roster up? I mean, it's very hard to trade Beal, which is the person that you know clearly needs to be traded. Um, yeah, Bill just doesn't belong to the care of Chris Paul. Now you need to go get Lonzo Ball. Um, need a point guard, man. You need a guard. You need to get rid of Bill and get a guard. I don't care if you get Darius Garland. Like, you need a guard. You can't keep trying to play ISO Ball. ISO Ball ain't working in Brooklyn. I don't know. ISO Ball don't work nowhere. ISO game. You ain't with ISO game? No, I ain't with ISO game. But it, it didn't work, bro. The Timberwolves, we playing the winner of this next series that we're uh, going to talk about the Nuggets versus the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, the Nuggets defeated the Lakers in their series uh, in the gentleman's sweep of 4 1. Very similar to last year's. Um, series in West Conference Finals, but um, the Lakers was able to get a game out. What do you think about uh, this series? Um, 
all together with the Lakers versus the Lakers. I mean, the Lakers supposed to sweep them. Everybody thought this at the beginning of the season. Like, everybody, like, they were talking like, we see the Nuggets again, we're going to beat them. Like, we know y'all weren't going to beat the Nuggets, bro. Come on. And, um, it was, dude, this was actually a gentleman sweep because they, they just let LeBron get that game for his legacy, you know, lose again, 12 two times in a row, you know, would be look pretty bad on King. So I just be, you know, they just throw him a game. I mean, Jamal Murray, man. <laughs> I, I knew I know I know you was crying, you know. I had somebody I was around watching the game with crying, you know, everybody was crying. Magic I don't Johnson cry over no basketball, bro. I don't cry over no basketball. He's just every time, bro. He's just running just like two and two, two, two of them. Bro. I mean, inspirational, man. I mean, he, he killed D Lo horrible needs to be traded. Austin Reed, he went hiding the whole series. I mean, he went hiding the LeBron whole series. Did. Hey, AD and LeBron did their thing though. But Austin Reed didn't do nothing that series, bro. He he had like one two games. He, he was like pretty, he was pretty consistent the whole series. Now D Lo, D Lo the one that's dropping twenty, D Lo the one that was dropping twenty points one game and zero points the next game. <laughs> that's the person we need I mean, to be talking about. I mean, yes, he showed, but Austin Reed, you know, he had some, you know, he had some games. He only had like fourteen. You can't do that against another. I mean, I don't. Aaron, Aaron Gordon dropping 29, 26, and then you got Jokic dropping 20, then you got Murray. You know, they needed a third score, and they didn't have that third score in Reeves, man. And he's the third score. That's what I would think. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I would say you would want D'Lo to be the third score because D'Lo is more uh, of a prolific score. It's just that he's not that consistent. So one game he's gonna give you twenty, or one game he's gonna give you, you know, thirty, and then all of a sudden you don't want it, but to the very extreme he's gonna give you zero. Um, but yeah, just just getting into my take. Um, I mean, basically cop and paste from last year's series. Obviously, you get the, the Lakers to to come out with a game. Um, it would have been interesting to see what the series would have been like. The Lakers would have got um game two. Um. Would be interesting to see what the Lakers would have been like if the Lakers would have got uh game five. I mean, any single one of those games besides game three, the Lakers could have um got just like you know last year. Uh just like the, the series is four one, the series very well could have been uh three one Lakers. It's just that you know, uh, Jamal Murray um came and, and shot his shot when it was time to to, to shoot his shot. Cause I mean, you look at the actual games. Jamal Murray was quiet those those two games where he hit the game winner. It's just that you know he hit the shot that mattered when it counted, and um, the Lakers could do that. Um, a lot. Of one thing that I've seen, you know, a lot during the series, a lot of people were saying was like, you have to have Austin Reeves, Rui, and D'Lo uh, match in the def- or defeat um, MPJ. KCP and um, Aaron Gordon, and you just um, didn't see that. At first, they were saying, you know, AD guys have to show up, and AD showed up, and LeBron showed up as usual, but your three others were going head to head, and the Nuggets, three others, defeated the Lakers, three others. And um, it's going to be interesting seeing what the the offseason looked like. Obviously, a lot of people point um, fingers at, at Darvin Ham. Obviously, you say you like J.J. Reddick, but um, if the, the Lakers decide to, to let go of Darvin Ham, uh, what do you think their moves should be moving forward? Um, 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 I don't think they change up the coaching. I just, I just got a weird feeling they don't because they hit the Lakers. Um, I think LeBron moves to Cleveland, though. You know, I, I, I got, a, I got, a, I got a great feeling LeBron moves to Cleveland, bro. I don't, everybody called me crazy. I, I, I mean, I, I'm not calling you crazy. I mean, a lot of people feel like he should move, but I just feel like at this point in his career, I just don't think he wants to move no more. L.A. is is the place to be. Cleveland is, is his home, and next year is his last year. Next year is not his last year. Make sure it definitely is last year. Make sure it's last year. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's you never know when he decide that he's just gonna, you know, hang it up. But I mean, um, I, I just don't feel like he wants to end his career 
in, in Cleveland. I feel like he wants to end it in, in L.A. So next we got to get into the NFL draft. Um, the NFL draft this year was um, historic. Uh, obviously, we had a uh, very uh, interesting uh, top 10. It was for the first time in history. Five QBs were taken um, in the top 10. Uh, six QBs were picked in the first round of the draft, tying the record for the most QBs chosen in the first round with the 1983 NFL draft. Um, the QB to headline obviously was the number one overall pick, um, Caleb Williams, the quarterback from USC, former Heisman winner, going to the Bears. I don't think that surprised anybody. Um, obviously, followed by um, Jaden Daniels, the quarterback at LSU, who won Heisman this year, um, going to the Commanders. <coughs> uh, Drake May, QB from UNC, going to the Patriots. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., uh, the all-world wide receiver from Ohio State, he's going to the Cardinals. But um, just starting off, what do you think about um, the draft as a whole, just, you know, some of your favorite picks? And um, then we'll get into to Caleb Williams. My favorite pick is the Broncos not letting us roll with Zach Wilson and picking up both Knicks. <laughs> You know, Bo Nix is, you know, he can be, he may be a Super Bowl guy. He might be one of them gems. You know, they got picked at number 12. I um, you know my favorite quarterback in the Caribbean, the draft, Judge McCarthy. He went to the um, Vikings. Like, no, no, not too serious. I don't think he'll be able to showcase his talents just about right now. But, you know, he, I think he'll be the starter. Um, you got Marvin Harrison Jr. going to the Cardinals. You know, you got a Mississippi guy that went to the Cardinals, you know, and Trey Benson. Uh, I feel like this is going to be a great duo. You know, Cardinals might be on the way up. They were horrible last year. You got the Patriots taking Drake May. Patriots need their guy. I believe he he's their guy, too. I believe he got J.D. McCarthy. But, you know, I believe, I believe he's their guy. I believe he can come there and be a system white standing quarterback that just throw dots. You know, he's one of those guys. <laughs> um, Jaden Daniels. Hadman want to go into the commanders. I don't think he changed the commander that much. He's a great quarterback. I believe he's gonna be a great, you know, great guy. He's gonna develop and everything, but the commander suck. So, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Bears, same thing. Bears had a good draft though. You know, they got Rome too. I seen that. You know, that was great for him. They they might get two more games, three more games this season. Well, no, they're, they're, they're too horrible to make any noise this year. Um yeah, I mean, uh, looking at the draft, obviously, I'm excited about uh, um, J.C. Latham, the, the offensive tackle out of Alabama, going to the Tennessee Titans, the best team in the Mid-South. Um, yeah, I, well, I, hold on, I got to ask you a question. I thought you liked Zach Wilson. I thought Zach Wilson was, was okay. I mean, I remember Zach Wilson, but, you know, he, he he's been proven to be kind of shaky. So we got at least have a guy to come Who in. Would be he garbage can. No, he's not garbage can, bro. He's decent. Oh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I like Bo Nix. Uh, Bo Nix was, was was very um, uh, good in college. Um, I saw him play against uh, Colorado. Obviously, I mean, just you know, throwing uh, great dots. The worry about him uh, so far, I've been look, uh, I've been seeing is um, in college he threw. Um, very fast balls um, in the medium range. He, he didn't really show off the, the, the deep ball arm too much. Um, and he hasn't shown to, you know, be in the pocket, manipulate the pocket and, and uh, things like that. You know, pat the football to sleep. Everything in college for him was just, you know, quick, short, intermediate throws. So it'd be interesting seeing, you know, how his um, arm looks at the NFL level. Um, same thing with JJ McCarthy. That's some of the, the worry with him. Um, but I mean, you know, I like him. You know, going to the Vikings. The Vikings have already been, you know, proven roster. Obviously, they they fell apart last year when, when Kirk Cousins got hurt. Um, I like Marvin Harrison Jr. to the Cardinals. You got a um, former Pro Bowl uh, quarterback, Kyler Murray. Um, out there, uh, I remember a couple years ago the Cardinals, you know, looked real good. 
Uh, obviously, they had, you know, D-Hop and they had J.J. Watt on defense, but, you know, that uh, team kind of sort of fell apart. So it'd be interesting to see Marvin Harrison Jr. kind of um, revive that franchise. Um, Drake made to the Patriots. Obviously, the Patriots needed a, a quarterback. No, nobody's surprised by that. Um, the worry with him is that uh, obviously he played for UNC and, you know, the competition that UNC plays is in the same level as competition as you will see, you know, in the Pac-12 last year or with, you know, um, the SEC um, with, with Jaden Daniels and, and LSU. So, you know, it would be interesting to see how he goes from the um, that level with UNC to NFL level. Um, you touched a little bit on Caleb Williams. Um, I like Caleb Williams. He, he's a, a, a cool quarterback. Obviously, he got the uh, uh, the Mahomes comparisons for everybody. He um, manipulates the pocket. He can, you know, uh, throw on the run, um, deep ball, good arm, fast arm. Um, we got, you know, a bunch of, of, of uh, pieces. Now, offense, you got Keenan Allen. You got uh, DJ Moore. You got um, Romeo Dunze now. Um, the defense is looking nice. So, it'd be interesting seeing what Caleb Williams can do for the Bears um, next year. A big story, though, however, is um, Michael Penix Jr. to the Falcons. Um, big story. Uh, the Falcons pick QB Michael Penix Jr. with the eighth pick after just signing uh, QB Kirk Cousins uh, for four years, $180 million, or the $100 million guaranteed um, just, you know, like a month ago. Um, Michael Penix Jr. will be... 24 years old next season. Um, what do you think about this decision by the Falcons to draft um, Michael Pena Jr. after just signing Kirk Cousins? It's a great decision. Um, Kirk Cousins has proven to not be a Super Bowl quarterback, man. I mean, I've already discussed it. He's proven to not be a Super Bowl quarterback. So, and, I mean, your team is looking better this year, and you got Kirk Cousins running the show. And he gonna he good at running the show, you know, for a year or for two. But eventually, you want somebody, you know. It, it's just like the Pat Mahomes and Alex Smith situation. It, it's a lot of situations that you had like that, where one guy just wastes his turn, and then when not the time, the same. Like, it's not the same thing. I'm just saying, when you know, Kirk gets hurt in the second and third of the year, you know, God forbid that happen. But we know we all know what happens, Kirk does. When he goes down, you know. Penis comes in there and does a thing, man. That's just the way I see it. I, I see it as a great decision. Um, as as a as a Madden team builder, I don't like it. Um, <laughs> for me, if you if you don't feel like you know Kirk Cousins gonna win your Super Bowl, why sign him for four years, one hundred eighty million with you know a hundred guaranteed? You know what I'm saying? If you want to use. You can you can you can get you know a Gardner Minshew or a um uh what's the, what's the other guy um what's the man name obviously the, the, the Browns got him now but you could have got like a Jameis Winston or you know what I'm saying you can get a real stop quarterback for a minimum you know what I'm saying so I don't understand why you uh wrap up you know a hundred million guaranteed in Kirk Cousins if he's not gonna be your franchise quarterback. Um, cause I feel like, you know, um, uh, obviously people are saying, you know, he could have got, you know, another lineman because they're, you know, uh, offensive lines a little shaky, um, uh, could have got a, a pass rush on defense. That's, that's one of the needs that they had. Um, they don't really need another, uh, a piece as far as like receiver, but you could have got another piece, but is there's a lot of things that you could have got in order to help the team as far as this year. And you didn't do that. And um, I feel like that's kind of just signing this season away already because by you drafting a quarterback so high, you've already gave, you know, uh, uh, kind of a, mi a middle finger to Kirk Cousins. And he hasn't even, you know, sit with training camp yet. Um, and then, you know, if you was to make this decision, I would say go after somebody like J.J. McCarthy who is still on the board. He's, you know, 21. Michael Penis Jr. is already, you know, 24. 
Um, Travis Lawrence is, is the same age. Um, Brock Purdy is is uh, around the same age. I want to say. Um, uh, one, yeah, I think Justin Fields is, is 24, 25. These are all guys who've already played, you know, two or three years in, in the field. And you're drafting a guy that's the same age as him who hasn't, you know, seen the NFL field yet. And then you're saying, well, okay, let's say they give up on Kirk Cousins after two or three years. Now, you know, um, um, what was <laughs> my, my brain is already, this is how much the situation has frustrated me. Uh, Michael Penix is going to be, you know, 26, 27 at that time you decide that you want to, you know, um, uh, show them off. So it's like, dude, like, I, I don't like, I, un I understand the idea of it, but, you know, with Kirk Cousins being, you know, the new kid in town, and then you're getting another new kid in town at the same time who's, you know, already, you know, uh, a bit old. You know, if you want to draft a, a 24-year-old quarterback, he needs to start today. You can't draft a 24-year-old quarterback and put him on the shelf. Um, that's that just goes against all type of you know team building. This is um the first time that this thing has happened, so it'll be interesting seeing if it works. Um, because I mean, like I said, I mean this is a a completely you know different concept than any other team you know has has uh tried thus far so um is there anything else you you gotta say i know great decision <laughs> i mean if if it if it works out it's fine i'm not i'm not rooting against them obviously i mean i would love to to see you know what i'm saying um a, a team do something different and you know pull the whole football world wrong but i just i i, I just i just don't think it's, it's gonna work because i you already you know gave your franchise quarterback you know a a a, a symbolic middle finger you kind of signed this season away because you don't have you know enough pieces in my opinion as far as you know making the team better and then you have a, a rookie quarterback who's coming in, who's already 24, and you're talking about putting him on the shelf until he's, you know, 26 possibly. So I just, I don't, I don't, I don't vibe with. It. That is episode 11 of the Fan Take. I'm Cam. That's Sweetie, and we'll see you next time. Okay, see, I'm in the thunder. I be feeling like I'm chick. Switch up like KD, Drake Munda. Don't get me a tick. Double team, bitch, in your bitch. Hooping like I'm on the net. Working hard, can't get no rest. I wrapped it right off my chest.